Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. South Africa's deal to acquire eight military aircraft from Airbus has hit serious turbulence after the recent statement by Arms Corps Chief Executive Sipo Tomu that the bill could be almost three times more than initially agreed upon. Engineering News Senior Contributing Editor Keith Campbell is with me in the studio to take a closer look at the story. Keith, welcome to the show. What, what happened with the A400M deal? Well, I think you've got to go back in time. South Africa joined the A400M program in April 2005. Uh, negotiations have been taking place with Airbus Military, subsidiary of Airbus, the manufacturer of the civil jets, uh, since about two, September 2004. Now, South Africa had built up quite a significant aviation industry from the 1960s uh, to the 1980s. Uh, designed to support the South African Air Force. Uh, and this reached its zenith with the uh, design and manufacture of the Royal Falk attack helicopter. South Africa designed a complete aircraft. Uh, following uh, the end of, of the conflicts of the 1980s, the defense cuts, the downsizing, uh, the South African uh, aviation industry was severely curtailed and the government uh, desired to protect and to re-stimulate that which was left. Now, the South African Air Force was also clearly going to require a replacement for its C-130B Hercules transport aircraft, which it had originally bought in the 1960s. So these two factors came together with the A400M program. In terms of uh, joining a program that would give the Air Force a transport aircraft and give South Africa a meaningful industrial participation at the partnership level and not merely the subcontractor level. At that time, the A400M was the only game in town. That's where the decision to join came from. Uh, of course, since then, the A400M has been hit by a number of serious problems. Uh, there were problems connected uh, with the engine and especially uh, the control software for the engine. And there are also issues of weight on the aircraft, uh, which is not uncommon on new aircraft designs. For example, uh, Lockheed Martin's latest fighter, the F-35, was also hit by problems of weight that had to be counteracted. This, however, had the consequence of severely delaying the A400M program uh, the original idea was that the first A400M would fly in 2008 and that the first three would be delivered during this year. In fact, it now, we are now hopeful that the first A400M will fly before the end of this year, but close to the end of this year. So the program is running quite considerably late and there's no doubt that costs have gone up as a consequence and Airbus is in negotiation with all the partner countries about this. Cabinet spokesperson Temba Maseko indicated this week that government will make a decision um, on the deal in a matter of days. Is it a very real possibility that South Africa could decide to pull out of the deal and what would the consequences be? Well, it's not an easy decision. Uh, the claim that the uh, cost has increased from 17 billion rand to 47 billion rand, uh, provoked an unusually strong statement from Airbus. Companies are usually very diplomatic when dealing with their customers, uh, but Airbus came out with a very strongly worded statement saying that they categorically denied this and that the figure of 47 billion was wildly exaggerated. The thing is, we don't know how much the program has gone up by. It's a safe to assume it has gone up, but Airbus military is still in negotiations with its uh, client countries. And until those negotiations are settled, and will include things like uh, if the production schedule is extended, or if some countries reduce the number of aircraft they buy, these will all have an effect on the final price. Now, is there a chance that South Africa could cancel? Yes, there is. Um, 
But as I said, it's not an easy decision. There are two problems. What happens to the local industry and what happens to the South African Air Force? Uh, basically, for the South African Air Force, there's only one practical alternative. That's to go with the Lockheed Martin C-130J Hercules, the uh, new generation Hercules that first flew uh, in 1999. Uh, but Lockheed Martin can give very little significant offset to South Africa for that aircraft. It's in full scale production. Uh, scores have been manufactured. Um, there'll be little industrial benefit for South Africa. On the other side of South African industry, um, certain of the elements of the South African contribution are probably irrevocable, and South African companies would continue to make these parts for the A400M program. But it would be damaging for these companies' relations with Airbus and with the wider international aviation industry in the long term. So whatever decision the government takes, there are going to be downsides for South Africa. It's, it's not going to be an easy decision. They could cancel it. Yes, that will uh, have problems and they could continue with the program and that will have problems. In what capacity will South Africa use these planes and do we really need them? Well, there's no doubt that the Air Force does need to replace its Hercules aircraft. They are 40 years old. Um, they've been modernized but still, they are 40 years old. Uh, you cannot fly a plane forever. Uh, now, South Africa is involved in peacekeeping and peace support operations in various parts of Africa. Uh, it needs to be able to support these. That means the Air Force needs the aircraft that can fly uh, troops and equipment and vehicles from South Africa to remote places in Africa. Uh, Therefore, they have to buy something to replace the current force of Hercules. Uh, leasing uh, aircraft from other countries, uh, from civilian operators, in the long run becomes very, very expensive. And if you have a crisis situation, you cannot expect foreign civilians to fly into airfields which might be under hostile fire. You can order your own air force to do that. Keith, thank you very much. That's the second tech show for this week. Join us again next week for more news analysis.